Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's go ahead and compare the absorption spectrum of carbon dioxide with the absorption spectrum of water vapor. So here you can see this is the absorption spectrum of carbon dioxide that we've been talking about over the last several videos where we realize how effective carbon dioxide is in absorbing wavelengths of radiation coming from the surface of the earth between 13 and 17.5 micrometers. But what happens when we compare that to the absorption spectrum of water vapor? for radiated energy coming from the surface of the earth and notice there's two main regions one right here and one right here where water vapor absorbs just about 100 percent of all the radiation coming from the surface of the earth now when we overlap the two you can see that there's significant overlap between what water vapor already absorbs and what carbon dioxide can absorb so basically if carbon dioxide wasn't available water vapor would already absorb these wavelengths right here but the rest of it would get transmitted into space if it wasn't for carbon dioxide. So carbon dioxide will aid in the greenhouse effect by absorbing this additional, ra this additional uh, radiation that otherwise would freely go into space. And that's what the significance is of carbon dioxide. It is able to absorb this portion of the spectrum that cannot be absorbed by water vapor. So that is why carbon dioxide is a significant contributor to the greenhouse effect because otherwise this radiation right here would not be absorbed and that radiation would simply be transmitted into space. Notice not all of it that carbon dioxide can do is effective because the overlap with water vapor but there is a significant portion that is specific to carbon dioxide that otherwise would freely go into space and therefore carbon dioxide aids the earth in keeping that nice comfortable temperature in the lower end of the troposphere and that is why.